So let's look at how we can generate this at runtime. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to just set up the rest of my environment real quick. I'm going to take, uh, let's copy from environment one, our existing nav mesh link and paste component is new. Now what you'll notice is that it actually puts the nav mesh link in the kind of same position relative to the game object. So these values are in uh, local object space, right? So if you copy it and paste it onto another object, it's gonna have that same uh, position relative to the new object. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, duplicate environment one, call it environment three, and this is gonna be 180 degrees rotated along the Z or Z axis, and it's gonna be uh, 100 units up on the Y. And then we're gonna bake it, there we go. And then we're going to duplicate, let's just make sure that that um, link is valid. Yay, it just automatically lined up. I'm a genius. I'm the greatest. Okay, and then we're going to create our environment four, and this is gonna be positive 90 rotation, uh, zero, and I think it needs to be it's like 96, positive 96, yes, yes. Okay, and then we just need to bake it as well. And now we've got our environment, right? Just double check your nav mesh links to make sure that they have linked up, which they have, which is wonderful. Sometimes they can be a little fiddly to set up. It's also possible to add and set them up via script. Okay, so now we've got our level set up and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add to our environment holder, parent object, a new component. Add component, and this is gonna be called uh, navigation baker. Create an add, and let's see if I can drag this into the scripts folder. I can, dragging skills for the win, and then we're going to double click it to open it. And this is going to be surprisingly simple. We're gonna add the using Unity Engine.ai namespace that we need, and then we're going to add a public nav mesh surface array. And we'll call this surfaces. Get rid of update, because we don't need it. We are going to use start, and what we're gonna do in start is just a simple for loop, and that is going to loop over surfaces.length, or loop to the end of surfaces.length, and we are going to bake each surface in the array. So we're just gonna say surfaces i dot build nav mesh. Yeah, I think actually, I keep saying bake. Bake may be the old term. I think build is the new term. So excuse me if I have misspoke there. Uh, I noticed they changed the name of this function. It used to be called bake and now it's called build. So perhaps we should all be saying build instead. So, and that's literally it. We just loop over the array, build the mesh for each one, and we're ready to use it. So I'm gonna save just to show this working. And let's, Select all of these, just so we can be sure this is actually doing it. We can multi-select and clear, right? So now there's no navigation data in the scene. And now let's drag our uh, surfaces into our array. I'm gonna shift click to select them all. I lock the inspector so I can do this little dragging into the array trick. Unlock the inspector. And so now we've got them all. We enter play mode. And ta-da, they have been baked, right? So it's really that simple. You could see there wasn't like a big hitch or hang when we started the game, it just did it. Um, you know, your mileage may vary with regard to performance, right? So make sure that if you're gonna be building the meshes, you choose like a good time to do it. Um, but as I mentioned during the Q&A, uh, it is, I have done a little test with like a very simple level that was procedurally generated and I was rebaking the navigation mesh every frame and didn't see a significant performance cost. So uh, 
test it out and see where your performance parameters lie with this. But in this case, just baking it once on startup should be within reach. Okay, but of course, this is not really that cool because there's been no change to our level anyway. So we could have just pre-baked this, right? So let's just add in a simple and fairly gratuitous change to our level geometry so that we can see that this is actually doing something. So we're gonna go ahead and add a public array of transforms and we're gonna call this object to rotate. And before, importantly, before we build the nav meshes, we're going to add a additional for loop it's going to go over to objects to rotate dot length and what we're going to rotate each object. Objects to rotate on, uh, uh, J, sorry, dot local rotation, not scale, local rotation equals quaternion dot Euler. So I'm going to provide this as a vector three, the rotation in X, Y, Z. And so we're going to say, we're going to do zero rotation around the local X. We're going to do a random dot range between zero and 360 around the Y and then zero around the Z or Z. So we're just going to apply a random rotation around the Y in the first for loop to each of the objects that we're going to assign to the array. In this case, it's going to be our wall holders. And then once that's complete, we're going to build the nav mesh, uh, surfaces. So save. And of course, we could do some much cooler procedural level generation than this, right? But since this is not a training about procedural generation, it's just a training about building nav mesh, I just decided to keep it simple. So we're going to go environment holder, objects to rotate, I'm going to lock the inspector, I'm going to select not the environments, I'm going to select their children, which are the all walls, objects, drop those into the object to rotate array, objects to rotate array and enter play mode. Now we can see our walls have been arbitrarily rotated, still aligned with the floor. And most importantly, our nav mesh has now been baked based on that rotation, right? So here we're combining kind of the best of all worlds, right? We can have nav mesh surfaces rotated in any direction that we want. And we can have, and we can generate that data uh, at runtime, right? So we're not limited by edit time authoring, right? We don't have to just have static levels that we make in the scene view and then save. We can modify our levels via script and then rebuild the nav mesh based on that. So really, really cool. Really opens the use of nav mesh up to a whole other set of games. If you know me, you know that I love procedural games and procedural generation. I think that's one of the coolest things. And now being able to use nav mesh in my procedural projects is just a really awesome and exciting possibility. So I'm super uh, pleased to be able to do that. And I hope that you guys enjoy using this new technology as well. So one thing I want to, uh, before I finish, one thing I want to draw your attention to is, do I still have the window open? Yes, I do. Uh, the GitHub repo, right? So you don't need this to follow along with this training, but I do really encourage you to clone or download it. And I particularly encourage you to look within the assets folder at this examples folder. There is a ton of cool stuff in these scenes. Demos for multiple agent sizes. This drop plank demo I think is really cool. It allows you to drop rigid body planks, which are then used to build a nav mesh to cross gaps for an agent. Really interesting uh, dynamic generation Example, free orientation, right? Which is some of what we were talking about. Uh, some stuff about sliding windows uh, where basically we're changing the, the window can open and close, right? And therefore the, uh, the nav mesh is gonna change. Um, and some dungeon examples, uh, really, really cool stuff that I encourage you to take a look at. And of course this includes, this is where I got the nav mesh components from, right? They're in this, uh, they're in this project and there are a bunch of other scripts, including the agent link mover script that I alluded to earlier. This is the best place to grab it from because you'll get the up-to-date version. Uh, 
a click to move script and a bunch of other stuff that's used. This local nav mesh builder is really worth looking at, really cool. Uh, and there's just a ton of cool stuff to look at there. I'm not gonna go in depth on it because you guys can dig in and have the joy of exploring that yourselves, uh, but I do encourage you to take a look at it. And with that said, I'm gonna stop there. And yeah, thanks very much for watching.